So um, the presentation this evening is centered on the LEAP program, which is at CCBC, and LEAP stands for Learn, Earn, Achieve, and Progress. And we have two coordinators from the program joining us this evening, Virginia Varga, who is the coordinator of the entire program, and then Alex Skidmore, who is the coordinator of employment activities. Um, also in the chat this evening are four of the five high school transition facilitators. Laura Robinson is here. She works with the Northeast Area High Schools. Mike Northwest. Bracknell, Northwest, sorry, Laura. Mike Bracknell works with the Northeast High Schools. Hello. Jen Waymont works with the Southwest High Schools. And I'm Katie Schmidt, and I work with the Southeast High Schools. So, um, just to set a few ground rules, all that we would ask is that you're welcome to put your questions in the chat. Um, we may or may not be able to answer them during the program, but we definitely will answer them at the end if you have questions and you want to save them to the end. And the only thing we would ask is that your questions not be too individualized, um, you know, for the benefit of the whole group. If you have some, you know, very individual question that you want to ask either Virginia or Alex, um, we can certainly put you in contact with them. Okay, so I'm going to mute myself and turn things over to Alex and Virginia. Okay, we actually have a presentation to share, but I just wanted to make sure you knew I was Alex and this is Miss Virginia, Virginia, just so you put, put the names with the faces since there's two of us in the same screen. Um, and before I do this presentation, I just want to share that there are so many um, options at the Community College of Baltimore County. Um, and this is just simply one option or one choice um, that you can possibly explore. So I just want to kind of share that. But the good news is once you're connected with us, um, if you find that you're interested in something else or maybe something else is more suitable for you, we can certainly guide you in the direction to get the information and the resources you need to make really good decisions about what you're going to do or what your children are going to do after high school. Okay, so I'm going to share now. Oh, I think you have to click on that. Oh, I'm going to click that. Okay, does everybody see the PowerPoint presentation? Just want to make sure somebody no. can see it. No. You can't see it? We'll share no. it. It says stop sharing. Hold on. Just making sure. Starting over. Oh, can't share your screen. Sorry, an error has occurred when screen sharing. Try again. Let me try again. I think you need to go back on that window. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about now? Yep, no, it's good. Just go from top again. Can you see it now? Yes, yes, we can. You can. Okay, good. I just want to make sure you can see it. Okay, well, this is simply just the first screen. CCBC LEAP program does stand for Learn, Earn, Achieve, and Progress. I'm going to move it along here. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can take because you already okay. <laughs> presented. So uh, this uh, particular program is not a big program. It's a small program. We have around 150 students are all with us in one year. And um, we, we actually get funding from Baltimore County Department of uh, Economic and Workforce Development Office, which it's actually coming from Department of Labor to give a, a shortest history of uh, those fundings and the money are used to pay for um, not just training or uh, uh, program trainings are uh, used to pay for everything what is coming with the package helping a student to be successful and complete the program and also to get employment uh, in the field what the training uh, it's about so pretty much it's um, it's coming with case management support. We can talk a little bit later about with employment support, with um, our rolling in the technical training programs, and with everything what is coming. The student doesn't have to pay one dime for any of those. Okay, uh, because the money are coming from uh, from the state. You will see a little bit later. We have a criteria on our all students. 
Okay, so we talked a little bit about where it's coming from. There are some eligibility requirements. Um, the student has to be a Baltimore County resident. They have to be a U.S. citizen or eligible to work in the U.S. And we work with the population between 18 and 24. Um, and the students should not be enrolled in post-secondary classes already when they come to the LEAP program to explore their options. Um, if a student is in, second, in a secondary school diploma or needs a second, if recipients have a secondary school diploma or it is recognized equivalent, must be low income and either basic skills deficient or an English language learner. Um, but the low income thing, um, it, we can talk a little bit individually to each of the students and their parents um, because they can be individuals living with their parents, but not actually contribu contributing to the household needs um, or financially. So we can kind of work around that. And there are some other eligibility um, criteria. There's other eligibility criteria that also plays a factor, um, like if the students um, are in a family that collects temporary cash assistance or food stamps, um, and there's other stuff. That's why it's important to talk individually to us about specific individual uh, situations so we can kind of work through them and around them. Um, so I just wanted to share that a little bit. Yeah, because the money are coming from this, uh, the county or from the uh, from the fed there are federal money. Of course, there are a lot of criteria. But what has happened? I I we don't want that to be a burden on somebody who wants to come to the college and wants to do a program. I think that is something what you can resolve with each uh, student coming to the door and trying to help them. In our history, we work by uh, with this program by five years. I think one time was happened to have to turn somebody back, but it was a very special situation. So again, that criteria should not scare anybody before they even consider us. So um, I, I have listed a few more barriers here just, just for people to understand what we actually um, um, have to, to work with. And uh, a lot of times we look for... Um, for youth who don't have a plan for the future. When they finish high school, they are not ready to go to a college. Or they may say, let me try a little bit something else to see how I like to be in a college just doing a training and later want to go on that path and uh, go for either credit um, uh, courses or for uh, another credential, a stackable credential who can help them getting a better wage. So, um, we, we, we work with anybody who drop off from school, but they need to be 18 because we at the college, we have other program, programs who help the students to finish their GED too. But again, we are the one making the connection with the program. We are the one helping the students to get there, helping with any kind of barriers they may have to even attend the class. We are there for the backup. Um, we can help somebody who has some juvenile justice problem and you know how that happened sometimes for a little thing somebody can have a problem there uh, but um, Alex can talk more about she's an expert on <laughs> on dealing with that kind of situation we can work with homeless we can work with um, students coming out from the foster system and um, you know it's a burden on them because they they finish high school and they find themselves that they have the system, the care system in place that they used to have. Um, we can work with students who are pregnant or they just become uh, parents and it's very hard for them to deal with the parenting, school, work and housing and all that things coming together, you know, to have a better life. We work with people with disability. And like Alex said earlier, we work with anybody who received benefits from, from the state. Again, those, those are a uh, reason for the student to be our all with us and we, are, we don't have to prove the first page because they are they already get in one of these criteria. But again, that is not a must. You, they don't have to be of any of this in order to come to us. Okay, so this talks a little bit about the LEAP program education and training services. Um, we really pride ourselves in front loading, loading professional um, development skills. So we have a 109 hours of 
prerequisite support class um, classes that we that we've put together to package to see not only that the students receive this valuable information that's related to the world of work, but also to kind of measure where they are in being able to manage their their um, their courses. And so initially the students are enrolled in the career exploration course. And this is a simple six hours um, broken up into two, three days where the students are learning a little bit about how to navigate Brightspace, which is our LMS system, um, how to manage their courses, how to find their courses, how to find their assignments, how, how they manage their time to get their assignments done. Um, and that, that also consists of a, a two-hour face-to-face orientation that I actually do. And then they also learn a little bit about life management, which is just what it sounds like. They're going into inf- 16 hours of content around life management, managing your life, not just your personal life, but what would your professional life look like and everything in between, family dynamics and things like that. We also talk a little bit about basic financial literacy, how to manage your money, um, how to create a spreadsheet to budget, very basic things that they would need to know in order to be successful. Um, Basic computer skills, we do talk to them about basic computer skills around Microsoft Word, how to attach documents to an email. um, And then of course those skills will be reinforced when they do their marketable resume for employment purposes. Um, And then that leads us into career and employment readiness and academic success, which are very two important pieces to the students as they enter into one of these technical training areas to the right. So these are actually approved uh, training programs that we can offer. Um, So, I mean, they're listed here, but we have a little bit of vocational trades. We have a little bit of administrative through um, Allied Health. We also offer certified nursing assistant, childcare, dental assistant, patient care tech, and pharmacy technician. So these are just some of the areas that we're able to offer the students and pay for the students to take. Um, And they're also receiving those prereqs, which are so important to employers, um, because when you have two people applying for the same job and you tell them that your CCBC student has been able to explore 109 hours of professional development or soft skills, they're like, oh, wow, okay, so they're probably a little bit bit more prepared than the average person. So it's it's a very helpful tool that we've implemented to front load those support courses. So yeah, I can add a little bit here mm-hmm. about the trainings. The fact uh, the college offer maybe 50 plus 60 plus uh, trainings, um, which uh, are everybody is welcome to take or uh, but the reason uh, this funding doesn't cover all those trainings is the fact we supposed to have the end of the training they supposed to have a recognized um, credential through a national or state uh, organization uh, let's just give you an example the certified nursing assistant they will have a a Maryland Board of Nursing uh, certification. The dental assistant, they will have a dental assistant certification through the uh, Maryland uh, Board of Dental Assistant. What sometimes involve uh, taking an exam or working in the field uh, number of hours, all those monies are are, uh, directed because they want the student to really have a recognition in their hand and they can apply not just in Maryland state, but wherever they go in the states. Um, but again, if somebody, if one of the students come to us in the end, we'll have the, the person what they should reach in order to get to us. Um, if somebody wants to come to us and want to do another training then it's listed here, we can look into this or we can help the student to find uh, other ways of funding or, you know, take them to the advisors. And uh, we are doing, we try to do a warm of ending to, to another uh, department or to another program in the college. Should not be, we only can do this. We may, we may not be able to pay for it, but all the time the college, um, it's, it's the beauty of this organization, which I love about the fact they have so many streamlines of funding. I even don't know all of them. A lot of people like to give to the community back. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of programs. We have money from Metallica. who The is, band, the, the rock band, band yes, Metallica. It just came in my mind. We have <laughs> money from um, um, the, um, I forgot now, from... Um, 
the for the driving. Driving. Yeah, they do the the truck driving. Oh, for CDL. Yeah, who gave us the money? Oh, <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, we have a really robust CDL yeah, program yeah. now too. But again, yeah. because we are not part of the program, but, but they have money from different organizations, either privates or sometimes from the state. Yes. Yeah. Have- and and the other thing to think about is a lot of these trainings are very, very viable trainings in this area. So we always have to consider, like, if the student does take the time to get through these trainings, will there be work at the end of this? Like a lot of students, you know, even four year, um, four year college you know, I want to go to college, they might want to do something. And that's great. But like, if it isn't a viable industry, then what's the point? I mean, whether it's paid for or not paid for, you want to make sure that it's a thriving area where there's a lot of opportunity for employment. And we do have in this area and the surrounding areas, a lot of work in these particular training areas. So we know that the students are going to be successful as long as they can get through the training uh, and in gaining employment, which we'll talk a little bit about that track, too, because we have a very unique um, track on how we get students into opportunities for employment. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's two, yeah, two can, phases, the support classes and then the training. And then, of course, we support them with employment. Um, but in that process with the Um, support courses and the trainings themselves, they are assigned to a case manager from the very beginning um, and a job developer from the very beginning that is beginning that, you know, rapport building with the students and their parents or their family um, and helping them and guiding them and advocating for them, making sure that they're setting realistic but goals that will stretch them, making sure that they're planning, um, you know, for registration and planning for academics, um, what they're planning on doing as far as training. Is it suitable for them based on their their assessments because they do take a reading and math assessment. So we want to set them up for success, not failure, and have some really meaningful conversations around where we feel they should start. Um, because where they're starting isn't where they may end up in four or five years, but they're they're starting somewhere, which is important. They don't have to sprint. They can jog. Um, so the case managers really are instrumental. I should talk about go case ahead, manager because mm-hmm. she's a job developer. Go ahead. I, I cannot do can. uh, that oh, part like you. <laughs> so we have a number of uh, three case managers now. And um, what they are doing, they are assessing, they are uh, running all the assessments with the students and they are preparing the file for the student to be enrolled in the program. So that part includes not just all the paperwork we already talk and the, all that uh, um, eligibility criteria, but also it's a, uh, it's a, uh, meeting and getting to know the students and see exactly what they want to do and what exactly it's um, it's fitting with their personality or their goals and they we have a lot of tools a lot of workshops where we talk about a lot of things and the students come up with a greater um, idea with and with um, with a plan of action i can call to meet all those goals and after they come up and they do this uh, this plan together, the case manager can um, decide if the student can go with um, leap cohort for the training, or they can go and be enrolled with the college under open enrollment with other um, population which is not coming from leap. But you know the college offer other courses than we offer. So we we will love the students to go through a leap training cohort because it's much easier for the case manager to advocate and coach them during the training. It's much easier to, because we set up meetings with the instructors, with the coordinators of the technical area. We meet with them every week. We know exactly what the students are. The students come back to the case manager and say, hey, I still have problems to get to this class for this and this reason. And they try to problem solve what they can do and and still make it through. Or sometimes they, let's say, maybe the program doesn't have just a course. Maybe the program has three courses. To become a pharmacy technician, you have two or three courses. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving an example. So maybe from some reason, because life has happened, they may not be able to finish with the group the first course. The case manager will make sure the student can still finish the training, but with another group or with another class. Uh, that kind of um, backup work is uh, it's very important for a student to be finished. They don't have to think every minute, oh, who should, who should I call or where I should go to have my problem resolved. That is 
taking out of them and they are able to focus just on the technical um, course. Um, that that the case manager does, and uh, they do the, the referrals when they see they need the resources. We are there. We provide tokens. We provide um, any kind of resources they may need for for housing. Everybody knows housing is not nobody's strength. Nobody can say they can provide resources to the house. I wish I would love to that to happen, but um, there are other resources in the community what we have access to and we know about, and we can help them to apply for. And um, anytime after they, some students come to us, they may have a child, they may want to work uh, for uh, during the training, doing a part-time job or something. We help them with that. We help them with uniform. We help them with transportation, whatever we can to 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 succeed. And um, sometimes we may have to negotiate even with the employer <laughs> mm -hmm. for some of those things. But uh, the case manager is there for the student from the beginning to the end and working hand in hand with the job developer um, yeah, to to move them in the next stage. And I will let uh, Alex to talk about because she's taking the students. Their 100% work, it's after the student finished the training, but they are with the student maybe 30 percent of the time from the beginning mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and she can talk about that yeah and so like i had shared the job developers do um teach the first two support courses the career exploration and the life management because what we have found in a lot of institutions for profit nonprofit, um is that employment always seems to be an afterthought which is kind of interesting to me because you usually go to school so that you can gain a skill and then apply that to the world of work. So it should always, job development should always be front loaded. The students have to develop a relationship with the job developers when they're coming in, not when they're leaving, um, merely because we have to coach them as well and make sure that they're prepared for the world of work. And we're able to coach them throughout the process of their training to make sure that they're on time every day, they're dressed appropriately, that they're coachable, they have a good attitude, all these things that are going to be applicable to the world of work are important even in the trainings and we're observing that and as we're able to observe that we're able to give them suggestions and coach them and make sure they're prepared at the end so post training once they've completed the actual trainings themselves successfully we do work with the students and offer them one of two things or both we offer them an opportunity to be assigned to a work site that is related directly related to the training that they've they've achieved. Um, for instance, Something let's say from. for pharmacy tech, I have a relationship with the East and the West side uh, district managers for Walgreens. And if a student doesn't have any experience or very entry level experience working, I can assign them to a pharmacy technician role at a Walgreens. And we are able to pay those students through the work experience for up to six to 12 weeks, a max of 200 hours. Um, and without getting in too much detail, there are some requirements for pharmacy tech that by doing that, it, it, it gets them the it gives them the ability to apply for their license too, their pharmacy license. Um, and so we're positioning them in an experience where we're still responsible for them. We're still coaching them. They're being paid for the experience, minimum wage. But at the end of that, the whole point is that the employer gives us their feedback. The student gives us their feedback. And we're able to use that feedback to improve the programming, to improve their skills, and also see what the employers are seeking from a really ideal candidate. But I will tell you, in most cases... The students are being directly hired at the sites in which they are experiencing their work experience. Um, so that's a win-win for everybody. Um, and that's what we like to see. And that's why it's so important to front load the soft skills development, because in the end, it's going to actually help them when they, are, they start looking for a WALO site or employment. But we also can uh, provide direct hire for the students. So if the students aren't interested in going into that six to 12 week experience, we can immediately start working with them on career planning, job searching, showing them how to you know, fill out applications online appropriately, doing direct calls to employers that we work with to set up interviews for the students um, and also doing mock interviewing with the students to prepare them on how to interview um, once they arrive for their interview and they, it gets rid of the nerves and, and, and helps them prepare on oh. the light sensors. Um, so yes, yeah, so we are helping them. 
Okay. This room. Yeah. We are helping them directly with, with employment, which is wonderful. And again, I've been doing this for over 13 years. So I have a lot of employers I work with in all of those areas and other areas. Um, if we feel students need that extra help in specific things like working with a student that might need a little customer service skills building, we can even work with them while they're in training for WALO, work experience learning. So it's very individualized, which is nice. Because as we're building that relationship from the beginning to the end, we're able to help those students where they are. Um, and we, we see the progress, the progression of their progress um, as they move towards the employment piece. So it's really nice to have that relationship early on. Yeah, and actually I can add here, they they place one student on one side. It's not like we take all the group and we take to a site and we expect everybody to learn. It's very individualized, the, the program. and. Pretty much a lot of them, they get hired to their sites, or if not, they find employment very quick. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of the doctor's offices we work with, they have relationships with other doctor's offices. So if they don't have a position for a dental assistant, they're like, oh, but I know so-and-so, that doctor needs someone, and that's happened before. So that's really good. But no, we are very proud of their placement rate. I mean, we do a, a great job at making sure the students are getting the work within the field that they have worked so hard to you know accomplish the training in. So we're very proud of that. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, I guess we are to the last Yeah, page. I didn't realize that. That went a lot quicker than I thought it Yes, went. we want everybody to leave with the information how to get to us. Um, if you get a copy of the PowerPoint presentation, you can uh, um, I would say scan the code and go directly to our program. But uh, our um, intake and outreach person, her name is Julia Moon. She is the one uh, doing all the intakes or go, getting back to everybody. She is our person who pretty much go out and do um, meet with the students, or she will turn uh, the, the calls in one to two days. That's for sure. I, I don't have doubt about. So if you want to find out more information about us, or if you want to enroll in the program, if you know anybody between 18 and 24 who need a training or is willing to get back in school, we are here to help. We really encourage everybody to give us a call and we start from there. And again, uh, I guess somebody will take it from here and uh, we can respond to any questions you have. And if we don't get to all those questions, again, if you call Julia, she will put you in contact with us and we can have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with um, anyone who wants to talk with us. Uh, I got a question. Yes. Uh, it be in person or going to be online? Some of the courses are online. Some of the courses are in person. If we talk about um, the dental assistant program, a lot of courses will be um, in person because they have to do hands-on training. If we talk about medical front office, some of the courses are still online because it's not so hands-on training. No? I'm saying yeah, and so so the one thing to know, the, the career exploration course at the beginning that consists of six hours of learning material, the first two hours we do a one-night orientation, and then the rest of that is actually online. And then the other courses that I listed to the left, all the support courses, they are actually managed by the students um, online. That's why it's important for us to show them how to navigate their work so that they're able to navigate it and do their assignments. But they're assigned to a specific instructor for each of those courses. Um, and then, of course, they have all their contact information and they've been doing it for a very long time. So they're very hands on with the students. But it gives us an opportunity to measure how well the students can manage their time while we're coaching them in that process. So the support courses are online, but a lot of the technical training pieces, it depends on which course you're going into. Some of the tracks are fully online. Some of them aren't. Some of them have lab um, lab work and some of them. So it just depends. COVID really put a little bit of a hinder on our structure. Um, and I feel like we're getting back into the classrooms, but we're still kind of making that transition. Um, so right now, yes, there is a component to being online and being in the classroom. But when you specifically choose a technical training, that information will be given to you. And that's part of the decision making process, like because we'll be watching you and making sure that you're you're doing well with your online learning um, support coursework. 
Uh, thank you. Yes, of course. But back to what you said, Amari, I'm not sure if this applies to when Miss Julia Moon calls you and you have a conversation with her. Yes, you will meet with her one on one in person to discuss your goals and see if they align with LEAP. And then you will also meet several times with your case manager one on one um, to go over the paperwork and make sure this is like something that you would want to consider. OK. OK. Um, Laura Robinson has a question. Mm -hmm. Which campus do you all work out of, or are you located at multiple campuses? Because we have families here from all over the county. I can respond to that. Uh, I don't know if everybody's familiar with Community College of Baltimore County. We have three campuses, one in Catonsville, one in Dundalk, one in Essex. And we have two extensive centers. One is Wings Mills. We are here tonight. It's happened to be here. And we have another extension in Randallstown. So we serve students around the Beltway and all the campuses. We are nine of us in the program, and we have offices in Essex in Catonsville. We travel. We don't have a problem to meet with the student at the high school, at the library, in Dundalk, even we work in Catonsville. We, that will not be a problem. The problem will be if the student want to take a special, a specific training, let's say dental assistant, and the college will have labs only in Dundalk and Randallstown mm -hmm. for the dental. I'm just giving an example. It would not be possible for the student to, to take the labs in essence because we don't have the lab. But um, other than that, the students will be sent to any campus in any location around the Beltway. Yes. And we do have free shuttles that go from one campus to the other. There is a schedule that they put out. Um, so we always make sure the students know about that. And like Ms. Virgie said earlier, we do provide bus tokens, um, day passes for um, students to travel if they need to. But if a student needs to meet with a case manager or job developer, we ask the student, what's the best location? We can definitely meet you there. Yeah, and we okay. schedule everything out. So we do our best to make sure that it's not too much for the students, like on their side, to get to us. We try to we try to work that out. Good question, though. But yeah, we're all over the place. Okay. Um, Campbell Gleason has a question. Sure. Sure. Hi, it's actually Adrian Gleason. Um, just... um, when would you say... We are having trouble hearing you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. When would you um, say is the best time to apply for the LEAP program? My son is 18, but he's a junior. You want me to answer that? Yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> so so we we would like for him to be a senior. And, okay. then, um, and then what we do, because he's 18, but he's obviously still in, in high school. So once he gets to, I would say probably around the holidays, he would want to reach out to Julia, like right after like January. Um, but, but in the meantime, let's say you'd be interested in learning a little more information by all means, he can still come in and he can still learn more about it. So there, it's never too early to learn more, but as far as enrollment, he would have to wait until closer to the spring to just show that he's actually completing high school. Understand. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. We actually have classes starting in July, offering a lot of trainings for that all the time. If we have students who want to go to the college, but they take um, CNA training before they even enroll in the in the college. Yeah, they do that too, sometimes. Okay. Um, we have a question from Sherla farrell Seely. Mm -hmm. Hi, yes. Um, is it possible, because I've been attending a um, couple of these sessions and um, my son was interested in the case program. Is it possible to apply to multiple programs, learn more about it, and then choose which one best suits him? Or you can only apply to one? How does that work? You, The time when you come to the college and you talk with one of the programs, let's say if somebody comes to us and we assess the student, we assess the situation, we say, you know what, I think your case will be best to work with case, or your case will be you may have to work with GED first to get your GED diploma. Well, we are the one helping the student to encourage the student to make a decision. Again, depend case by case. And the case is a wonderful program who offer more uh, hands-on and 
more one-on-one uh, trainings than we do. But again, depend the student, depend the situation, and um, yeah, they you you can you can get funding from a lot of uh, grants or from a lot of programs. That is not the problem. But sometimes the the level of activities of the time they have to um, commit to the program may not allow them to be in two or three programs at the time. But later, yeah, they can move from a funding to another funding and get stuck about credential or do different things. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Yeah, and some of the trainings we offer do open up opportunities for the students to experience pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship opportunities. So like, let's say he starts here and he gets a credential, then we're able to, <clears throat> excuse me, manage him because we didn't even talk about retention. But once the students get employed, we still, we still stay with them for a year. And we report out quarterly on them to make sure they're doing well. Um, and so it, it, it just doesn't stop there. Like we certainly continue our relationship with the students and we encourage them to pace themselves and, you know, make sure they make a good decision now. And then they can also have our, our guidance throughout the process of even considering on the job training, pre-apprenticeships, apprenticeship opportunities. I mean, I've had employers pay for additional training I've had them pay for additional credentialing um, once the students are placed in employment opportunities. We have a lot of students also going to the credit side. When they finish with us, some of them, they want to become LPNs or they want to be uh, nursing assistant. Then we, we, we encourage them and they have a good start with us and they know what exactly to expect, what is the volume of work, what, and they, they go for secondary classes with us too after they finish with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. welcome. Um, Mike Bracknell has a question. Yeah, I had a question, but I was going to, uh, Ms. Farrell Saley, um, I was going to tell you, um, just a, a thought, uh, I would probably, A, I would probably, and you probably already have, talked to your transition facilitator about those. Like, they could probably give a, a decent idea of, you know, which one looks, like, lines up what you're looking for. And another thing is, like with with Case and Single Step, you can, I believe you can visit that program. Um, yeah. And and once you put your eyes on it, I'm willing to bet you'll have an idea of whether that's, a, you know, what you're looking for. Um, yes. And I don't we, know, do y'all offer some sort of like visits or anything? Question. Well, I mean, that's kind of a it's kind of a loaded question because again, it really just depends on whether there's active training happening and where it's located and whether it lines with your, your interest. But I will tell you, we work with Michael Tan single step heavily. And so we consult with one another. Um, and so like, if you were to meet with them and then meet with us, we could kind of come to the table and see what we felt was most suitable based on the student. Right. Um, that's, yeah. That's, so that's, that's no problem at all. Mm -hmm. And then of really course, great. if we have, if we have active labs ha happening and you say, hi, you know, Alex, I would be interested in bringing my son to see like certified apartment maintenance tech in action, or we have peer to peer. So like, for instance, we might have someone that's already completed our program, has been working in the field for six to 12 months. And we're always open to say to that student, would you be willing to talk to this student as somebody that would be wanting to come into the program? Um, so there's ways that we could try to expose your son to, you know, exploring these ideas. And there's no rush, like I said, to the finish line. So we're always here to help in any way you need us to. And we'll be very, very happy if they work with you first in the high schools, and then you are the one making uh, make a recommendation too. Because right. then that means they will start earlier. You know, they don't ex they don't wait until they finish high school and what I'm going now, what I'm doing now. I think we had very good results working with some of the transition facilitators in the high schools for that. Yes. Matter. <laughs> yes, and our transition coordinator, I mean, they've been sending us a lot of information and we apply to a few programs. He actually has an assessment meeting with Case next month. And so this is my first time learning about the LEAP program. And so it's like, OK, I, you know, I'm trying to learn about all the available programs so that I can assist him with making the best decision, you know, for him. It's up to him. But still, it's like every session we attend, I'm like, well, this is offering more support than the other <laughs> one. So now I'm like, do I apply to all it, you know? 
But yes, with our trend, um, transitional facilit facilitators, I think is Laura Robinson. So she sends us all this information and updates. So now I'm overwhelmed with all the options. <laughs> it's good to well, have lots yeah. of options. Yes. To be honest, I don't think so. Me and Alice who know all the options. In the yeah, there's there's no way. Many. There are so many. It, it's amazing. I'll, I'll say this, like, and I was talking in one of our meetings the other day, like, it, 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 that's a nice situation to be in because um, the, there's so many more pr good programs. This is a, it, this seems to me, I'm pretty sure it's a good, pro really good program, right? Like, yes. um, there's so many good, more options now than there was just a few years ago. Um, so that's a nice situation to be in. One other question uh, that I wanted to ask y'all, um, I know y'all had mentioned previously that you do work with doors. Um, if we have um, a family who has a case with doors, um, what is the best way to bring y'all in to to go through doors or to go through y'all and then go back to doors? Or what, what's the what's the best way to handle that? I I think doors offer uh, specific um, benefits and services. What a student should go there and get it. Because what it's happened, we have a disability program at the college who will make the connection with doors anyway. So we are not very, I don't know, familiar with what they offer, but we know for sure they should get the benefits from there right. first and whatever they can offer. Yes. And then if they consider to come to us, yes. Yes, That's because exactly, again, exactly what I'm asking. Thank I, you. Yeah. I think doors cover more than one training. They cover... Yeah. Yeah. more other benefits as much i know about them and i yes. think it's a great organization who help the students yes we work with doors the the only inconvenient we have is the fact we only have approved the trainings we already mentioned to you and some of those trainings will require a certain uh, level in math and reading for them to be um, attending the trainings you know it's it's a little challenging i have to say but again they can take some prayer uh, classes in math i think we have we offer something like that mm -hmm. we pay we pay for tutoring too we didn't say that there are a lot of things we pay for i i forgot about all of them but we help the students if they are close to you know the dental uh, coordinator say oh i'm not getting anybody who is not at least uh, eight in math or seven in math because they have to learn a lot Trust me, it's not an easy course. I'm just giving an example. So we offer the math prereq class, and then the student can see where they exactly are, and then after they make a decision, they they will consider or not that training. Any last questions? Well, I would certainly um, just sure. ask. Can I just ask? Um, what is the case program? I've never heard of that. Like, is that I, I something don't. equal to LEAP or completely different? They, they, they work with uh, people with disabilities, either uh, individually, and they off, offer trainings one-on-one. -on -one. They will do something like child care or veterinary uh, assistance. They assistant. do warehouse okay. logistics. Yeah, I'm not, the, I'm the not sure what they're fun. I think their funding is coming from the Department of Disability, if yeah, I'm Ms. not Gleason, wrong. Who, Again, where, it's Ms. hard Gleason, to talk about your, another program. I'm sorry. Ms. Gleason, where does your um, where does your student attend high school? Lock Raven. Okay, so I'll I'll tell you what. If I, you should email Cindy Sabo, and and she'll send you information on the K Single Step Program. Um, oh, it's I, I was the Single sure. Step Program. Okay. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, Single Step. And yeah. You actually, you can also go to the CCBC website, and if you actually yeah. go to the website in the top top right corner, there's a search engine there, and if you put single step in there, it will show you all of the information you need to know. You can put pretty much anything in there that's appropriate, and you'll you'll find what you need. <laughs> yeah, um, it, so gotcha. And, 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 okay. and Cindy can Cindy can also like kind of point you in the direction of who have a conversation with and she can give you send you like some abbreviated information or whatever i i would send it to you but 
I don't have Lock Raven, so I, I don't want to step on her toes. But, yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I just uh, I just went to went to the website. And yes, I, now I can read what they offer to you. There it's, are so many. It yeah. is. You and should the, go and explore. The one that thing I the like best. about CCBC is we're not hidden. And what I mean by that is what, no matter where you go, there's going to be contact information for a person. OK, so like there's going to be a phone number and then there's going to be an email. So if, if you also wanted to reach out with, to them directly, you could do that because the information is there. Um, but again, you could always email us or Julia or Virgie and we would be happy to help. Yeah. If you just Very say okay, happy. single step CCBC, mm -hmm. it's coming up exactly that page with all the training. It's just a offer. lot of information. Yeah, it's a, And who you should contact in order to. Yeah, it's always at the that. bottom. Yeah. You'll see it. Thank you. But again, you're not by yourself. So if you're not getting what you need, the gift about these meetings is that you're meeting us and we can help you. We can direct you anywhere you need to. We can help you. So just, you know, keep that in mind. I knew they do these animal workers, which mm -hmm. I love the program. I wish I could have, we could offer too. But unfortunately, the state of Maryland doesn't have a board of a veterinary assistant which is a shame. It really is. <laughs> do we, do we have her, your yeah. contact information, Alex and Virginia? Like, would um, that be included? We can certainly, I mean, I don't know if uh, Ms. Smith wants to send it out, but she can certainly send out her information. She has my contact in my contact number and email. Yes. Adrian, is that you? Maybe, maybe not. All right, Ms. Gleason, if you want to email me at mschmidt at bcps.org, I'll put it back in the chat. Oh, I am happy to send that. you the contact information. You should put our emails there too. The reason I don't want to give you my phone because we are all over the places all the time. And I, I, I uh, rather prefer the email because I will respond to you on the same day, <laughs> better than on the phone. Okay. You yeah, you can in? put mine too. I'm terrible with that. Oh, you're going to yeah. put it in the chat? Yeah, Thank well, you. We're putting them in the chat, mm -hmm. so I didn't even think about that. That makes yeah. complete sense. Okay. Mr. Bracknell did it. For that, I prefer <laughs> my I kind of like the chat. It's fun. Hi. You can put little smiley faces in there. Okay. <laughs> okay yeah. There we go. Okay. You can submit now. There we go. All right. So they're both there. Does anybody else have any questions before we stop for the evening? Yes, no, Alex. just appreciate nope. your time. Thank you so much. We we'll love to see the students to the college, okay? Even they don't come to live. Yes. <laughs> I just love to see the students around. Okay. So they a wonderful you. program. Thank you. Amari, did you Thank have you. something? I'm sorry. Uh, no, no question here. Okay. Okay. Now. Thank you. I would like to look forward to um my daughter's getting into the program as well. They're in ninth grade at Mill Prep Mill. So um, I, I look forward to hearing what more y'all have to offer. So thank you oh, for yeah. that. And one thing we didn't mention, I'm sorry for pointing. It's, it's getting late. One thing um, we didn't mention is we do go around to different high schools and we come to the classrooms when the students are juniors and seniors to discuss our programming and also work with the students um, as needed on career exploration, which is a nice little thing we do. So for the, you know, for the transition specialist counselors, as well as the parents, um, we, we, we will eventually hopefully see your student at the school. Um, if we're coming in and doing visits. So we're trying to restructure that efficiently so we can get across the Beltway and get to all of the places. So it might be myself or Julia or one of our colleagues, but we definitely are going to be coming in. So Ms. Payne, hopefully your daughter will see us at some point coming in and talking to her in a couple years. Yes, absolutely. I know my son, he graduates this year. So um, hopefully um, you get a chance to meet him. His name is Dominic. Okay. Um, so he, he'll be graduating. So I would love for him to um, chime in on this as well. Soon. Okay, absolutely. Awesome. Dominic, okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell him that. that I, I don't know. Yes, yeah, I'll, I'll mention to him that some people may come around, um, you know, to assist him in that, that matter. What high school? Oakland Mills High School. Where are you Mills? No, Milford, Milford Mill High Milford School. Mill. Oh, Milford, Milford Mill. Mill. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, I may have already met your son. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, just like Alex, you know, she's got the glasses now. I don't know, but I've been I've been there a couple times already this year or last year. So I'll ask him the next. Dominic. Okay. Yes. Sounds good. Well, thank God so much. 
Great. Absolutely. You're welcome. Alex and Virginia, thank you so much for all of the information you brought to the table tonight. I know the transition facilitators loved meeting with you a few weeks ago, and I hope the people who participated tonight got as much out of your presentation as we did. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank and you we for having us. To come back, okay? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Take fun. care. Okay. Bye-bye. Have care. a great yeah. night, everybody. Bye. This was great. Night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Take Take care. Care. I'm so happy, Stuart. You do. Bye. Mm -hmm.